Good morning, Union Red Hawks. We hope you are prepared for another success-filled video here on Mr. Wilson Teaches. That's what happens when I write the script during first hour. Anyway, this week's video is less of a recap and more just the lecture for the week. Uh, look what a fun and quirky teacher I am. I added a bitmoji this time. He's happy because he's sitting on a star. In real life, if you sat on a star, you would burn your butt because stars are hot. They are more than 100 degrees. Subscribe for more science facts. Speaking of degrees, let's talk about the angle measures of polygons. We'll talk about both interior and exterior angles, and then we'll do some example problems. But first, we need to go over classifications. A polygon is a closed figure with at least three sides, all of which are straight lines. When we say closed, we just mean that if you trace a polygon with your pencil, you'll eventually end up back at your starting point. Polygons are classified by the number of sides they have. More on that in a moment. A regular polygon is a polygon with all sides congruent and all angles congruent. And a diagonal is a line connecting two non-consecutive vertices in a polygon. So I said polygons are classified by the number of sides they have, and here's what I mean by that. A polygon with three sides is called a triangle. The tri prefix comes from the Latin word for three. A polygon with four sides is called a quadrilateral. Again, the quadri prefix is the Latin word for the number four, and lateral comes from the Latin word lattice, meaning side. So it literally means four sides. And then for reasons, we suddenly switch from Latin to Greek when we get to five. The word for a five-sided polygon is pentagon. Penta means five, and gon comes from the Greek word for angle. So the word pentagon literally means five angles. I know, I said that we classify by the number of sides, yet so far two of the three that we've discussed use words for angles instead of sides. So at this point in your notes, it might be helpful to make a little side note saying that in any polygon, the number of angles is equal to the number of sides. So we can talk about the number of sides and the number of angles interchangeably. Uh, anyway, six sides is a hexagon and seven is a heptagon. You can stop drawing these when you get to six. They get a lot harder to draw after that. But here are the additional names you'll be expected to know. An eight-sided polygon is an octagon. A nine-sided polygon is called a nonagon. And then we have a decagon, a hendecagon, and a dodecagon. If there are more than 12 sides, we just call it an ingon, where in is the number of sides. So for example, a 15-sided polygon would just be called a 15gon. A 20-sided polygon is a 20-gon, and so on. Now that we've defined some terms, let's get into some theorems. We're going to build a table where we compare the number of sides, number of triangles, and interior angle sum for these four polygons. The number of sides should be easy. Now let's focus on the triangle. I can make a triangle out of just one triangle. I realize that's a weird thing to say, but I promise it'll make sense in just a moment. For now, just put one there. And hopefully you remember that the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Now let's take a closer look at my quadrilateral. I'm going to draw every diagonal that I can from this vertex. If you look back at our definition of a diagonal, it's a line between two non-consecutive vertices. So I can't draw a diagonal here, I can draw one here, and I cannot draw one here. So I can only draw one diagonal from that vertex. Now remember when I said I can make a triangle out of just one triangle? Well this image is meant to show you that I can make a quadrilateral out of two triangles. Importantly, all of the vertices in these two triangles are also vertices in the quadrilateral. So my number of triangles here is two. Well, if one triangle has 180 degrees, 
then two triangles will have two times 180 degrees, which is 360 degrees. Let's see if we can follow the same steps for a pentagon. Again, we can pick any vertex. I'm choosing this one. And we're going to draw every possible diagonal from this vertex. I can't draw a diagonal to this vertex because these two vertices are consecutive, but I can draw one to this vertex. I'll draw that in and I'll look at the next vertex and sure enough, I can draw another diagonal. And the next vertex is consecutive with the first one, so I'm done drawing diagonals in the pentagon. And as you can see, I got three triangles out of it. So let's add that information to our table. Each triangle has 180 degrees of interior angles, so three triangles put together will have 180 degrees times three, which is 540 degrees. Lastly, let's fill in the column for the hexagon. Once again, I'll pick a vertex to start with, and I choose this one. I can't draw a diagonal between consecutive vertices, but I can draw one here, here, and here, and not here. So now I have four triangles, all of which share their vertices with the hexagon, so I'm going to put four here in the table. And when I put four triangles together, their interior angle sum is four times 180 degrees, which is 720 degrees. I hope you've noticed a special pattern that's emerging. In any polygon, if we know the number of sides, which I'll represent as n, then the number of triangles the polygon is made out of is n minus 2. And to get the interior angle sum, I just multiply the number of triangles by 180 degrees. So we'll say n minus 2, all times 180 degrees. So let's build a new table, which we'll fill in momentarily. This geometry class is turning into a carpentry class because of all the tables we build. We want columns for interior angles and exterior angles. We want a row for the sum, and we want a row for one angle of a regular polygon. Back to what we just learned though. The polygon interior angles theorem states that the sum of the interior angles of an n-gon is the quantity n minus 2, times 180 degrees. And again, n is just the number of sides in the polygon. Now one of the things we said when we defined a regular polygon was that all the angles were congruent. So our theorem has a nice corollary. If all the angles have the same measure, then we can just divide that sum by the number of angles to get the measure of each individual angle. And the number of angles always matches the number of sides, so we're just dividing by n. So the measure of each interior angle of a regular n-gon is n minus 2, all times 180 degrees, and all divided by n. Let's put those in our table right quick. For interior angles, the sum is n minus 2, all times 180 degrees, and the measure of just one in a regular polygon is just that divided by n. To finish that table, we'll have to talk about exterior angle measures. If you don't remember, an exterior angle is just the result of extending one of the sides of a polygon outside of the polygon. So these are my exterior angles here. And keep your eye on these exterior angles. Something magical is about to happen. Without changing their size or shape, I can just slide them together and get a perfect circle. I want to see that animation again. It was smooth. So here are the exterior angles, and I can rearrange them to form a circle, which is 360 degrees. And that's our polygon exterior angles theorem. The sum of the measures of the exterior angles of a convex polygon, one at each vertex, is 360 degrees. Now that word convex has a meaning that we won't get into in this lecture, but just know that if I ask you what the exterior angles add up to in a polygon, it'll be 360 degrees. I won't ask you that for any polygon that isn't convex. The neat thing is that our theorem never specifies how many sides the polygon has. 
the exterior angles add up to 360 degrees, whether it's a triangle, a pentagon, a dodecagon, or an 8675309 gon. God. And the corollary we used for interior angles works again for exterior angles. Since a regular polygon has all angles congruent, we can divide the sum by the number of angles to get the measure of just one, which means the measure of each exterior angle of a regular n gon is 360 degrees divided by n. Again, remember that n is just the number of sides. Let's add these formulas to our table. For exterior angles, the sum of the angles is 360 degrees, and one angle in a regular polygon is 360 degrees divided by n. Now we just need to see some examples of this in action. The first one says find the sum of the interior angles of an 11 gon. I hope you drew the table because I'm going to pull up a simplified version of it on each of these examples so you can see which formula I'm using. This one says sum and interior, so we'll use theta equals n minus 2 times 180 degrees. n represents the number of sides, so I can replace n with 11. 11 minus 2 is 9, and 9 times 180 degrees is 1,620 degrees. 1,620 degrees is less hot than the surface of a star, so don't sit on a star. Example 2. Find the measure of an interior angle of a regular octagon. It says an angle, and it says interior, so I'll be using the formula from this part of the table. An octagon has eight sides, so I can replace n with eight in my formula. Eight minus two is six. Six times 180 degrees is 1,080 degrees. And 1,080 degrees divided by eight is 135 degrees. So one angle in a regular octagon is 135 degrees. In those two examples, the number of sides was given to us, and we had to find the angles. In our next two examples, they'll give us the angles, and we'll have to find the sides. This one says that the sum of the interior crocodile alligator I dropped the sum of the interior angles of a polygon is 900 degrees. So I'm going to use the formula for interior sum. I can replace theta with 900 degrees, and I think next I'll divide both sides by 180 degrees. 900 degrees divided by 180 degrees is just 5, and on the right side, times 180 and divided by 180 cancel each other out, and I'm left with 5 equals n minus 2. I'll add 2 to both sides to get n by itself, and n equals 7. But the problem doesn't say find the number of sides, it says classify the polygon by the number of sides. So there's one more step. A polygon with seven sides is called a heptagon, and that's our final answer. Example four says the measure of an interior angle of a regular polygon is 150 degrees. So again, we're looking at the one angle row and the interior column. Here's the formula, and like I said on number three, we're given theta and we're looking for n. I'll replace theta with 150 degrees, and this is where the algebra requires just a little bit of creativity. I'll multiply both sides by n to get rid of the fraction on the right side of the equation, and that leaves me with 150n degrees equals n minus 2 times 180 degrees. On the right side, I want to get rid of the parentheses, so I'll distribute the 180 degrees to both the n and the minus 2, giving me 180n degrees minus 2 times 180 degrees on the right. 2 times 180 degrees is 360 degrees, and I can subtract 180n degrees from both sides. 150n degrees minus 180n degrees is negative 30n degrees. So I have negative 30n degrees equals negative 360 degrees. I'll divide both sides by negative 30 degrees, 
Don't forget that it's negative, by the way. And on the left, my minus 30s cancel. So do my units, if you wondered, but that's another topic. On the left, I'm just left with n. On the right, if I do negative 360 degrees divided by negative 30 degrees, the degrees cancel, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 360 divided by 30 is 12. So we have 12 sides, but again, just like on number three, the question doesn't ask how many sides does the polygon have. It says classify the polygon by the number of sides. A polygon with 12 sides is called a dodecagon. What is Homer Simpson's favorite shape? A dodecagon. Those are all the types of questions you can be asked involving interior angles. So now let's shift our focus to exterior angles. Example 5 says find the measure of an exterior angle of a regular quadrilateral. That word an tells us we're looking for just one. So we're looking at the bottom row of our table. And the word exterior tells us to look at the right column. So the equation we're using is theta equals 360 degrees divided by n. It says it's a quadrilateral, so that means four sides. So n equals four. I'll replace n with four, and this is a fairly simple division problem. 360 degrees divided by four equals 90 degrees, and that's my final answer. Number six. The measure of an exterior angle of a regular polygon is 15 degrees. So again, just one angle, so we're looking at the bottom row, and exterior angle, so we're looking at the right column. So we're using the same equation as last time, only now we're given theta instead of n. I'll replace theta with 15 degrees, and now to get n out of that fraction, I have to multiply both sides of the equation by n. On the right, division and multiplication by n cancel each other out, so I just have n times 15 degrees equals 360 degrees. I'll divide both sides by 15 degrees to get n by itself, and after I cancel the 15s on the left, I have n equals 360 degrees over 15 degrees, which calculates to 24. So this polygon is a 24-gon. There are a couple of other ways you could see this. You may be asked to solve for x given a diagram where x is part of an angle. Here it's an interior angle, but there's nothing saying this is a regular polygon. In fact, we can clearly see that it's not because none of the angles equal each other. So we have to figure out what all the angles add up to, and we'll use our interior angle sum formula for that. This polygon has four sides, so I'll replace n with four. 4 minus 2 is 2, and 2 times 180 degrees is 360 degrees, so I know that all of these angles add up to 360 degrees. So let's fill that in. x degrees plus 134 degrees plus 65 degrees plus 86 degrees equals 360 degrees. If I add 134, 65, and 86, I get 285. So x degrees plus 285 degrees equals 360 degrees. To get x by itself, I'll subtract 285 degrees from both sides, and 360 degrees minus 285 degrees is 75 degrees. Last example. This time it's exterior angles, which we know add up to 360 degrees, no matter how many of them there are. So let's fill in our equation x degrees plus 59 degrees plus 72 degrees plus 78 degrees plus 84 degrees equals 360 degrees. When you add up 59, 72, 78, and 84, you get 293. So x degrees plus 293 degrees equals 360 degrees. Subtract 293 degrees from both sides. The 293s on the left cancel, and 360 minus 293 is 67, so x is 67. That's it for this video. Um, the whole reason I became a teacher was to become rich and famous, 
So make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel because if I don't hit a million subscribers and get sponsored by Quick Trip, then my seven years of college were a complete waste. But for real, if these videos are helping you, I do want to know. And if they're not helping you, or worse, if they're actively making it harder for you to learn, I want to know that too. Stay awesome, you clowns. I'll see you next time. Now that we've defined the carpentry class because of all the tables we build, why did I keep that in the script? So don't sit on a star. It's not even that funny. That 24 gone conclusion. No, that ain't it. Then my seven years of college were a complete waste. Three of them actually were a complete waste.